um, just to introduce myself, I'm a family medicine physician here in New York. Um, I'm also a union uh, rep for uh, the union for resident physicians in New York called the Committee of Interns and Residents, um, member of Black Voice. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a revolutionary socialist. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the current situation uh, with coronavirus from a healthcare professional's perspective. Um, Right now, with over 230,000 confirmed cases and 9,000 deaths, the coronavirus pandemic is wreaking havoc across the globe, uh, with Italy surpassing China in deaths and Iran in shambles due to the virus compounded by the U.S. government's absolute genocidal sanctions. Uh, in the U.S., there have been over 10,000 confirmed cases and 150 deaths. This number is clearly a gross underestimate as the U.S. was delayed in testing, has only tested a small portion of the population. And this is largely due to the fact that the U.S. declined uh, an approved WHO test that the rest of the world had already been using, largely because the U.S. wanted a domestic company to benefit off of that contract. It's also been suspected that it's partly due to Trump's concern that higher COVID cases would hurt his chances at reelection. As testing increases, this number is undoubtedly gonna skyrocket. Top health officials uh, it, at Johns Hopkins estimate there could be anywhere from like 50,000 to half a million cases in the US already at this time, and this number is only gonna grow. I think it's something to talk about that CDC criteria thus far around who should or should not be tested changes kind of like on the hour, literally. But um, the, at this point, the recommendation is still to only test people with symptoms and a known exposure or travel to a category one region of the world, such as Italy or China. And these recommendations are going to, again, lead to an underestimate of the true burden of disease as the virus is already spreading through communities. They, the same recommendations disproportionately leave the poor and working class who are less likely to have traveled or know someone who has recently been to Italy to be, they're going to be less likely to be evaluated with the same level of scrutiny as others. Um, countries as like South Korea have instituted mass testing and may already have the pandemic under more of a control, partly as a result of the mass testing that they're doing. Um, healthcare workers like myself who have direct patient contact and um, the possibility of getting others sick can't even get tested. I just want everybody to let that sink in. I have trouble getting tested and I work at a hospital that just today, I was literally in a gown, a mask, another special mask, special gloves, doing a test on somebody else, and I still can't get tested unless I have symptoms. Um, but you know who can get tested? Tom Hanks can get tested, and his wife, Rita Wilson, can get tested, or the entire Brooklyn Nets basketball team can get tested since their team owner has the funding to hire a private lab to test people. And I'd be, I'm pretty damn sure that Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates would have no problems finding tests if they could slither out of whatever safe house they're currently hiding in. Um, and I think that these are just some of the disparities in testing that we see under capitalism. But even if the U.S. had widespread testing, it would still be nowhere near enough. And I think that that's really key. Under current policy, widespread testing would be free to testing, but one of the questions is what about treatment? As reported by CBS News recently, the recent COVID relief bill provides, quote, free testing and expanded funding for food security programs and paid sick family and medical leave for workers at companies with 500 employees or fewer. But there are still questions over if there's needed medical care, if that would be covered. The question is really important because medical bills are the number one driver of bankruptcy in the U.S. and long hospital stays for a family member with coronavirus could lead to economic ruin. This leads many to be less likely to seek care when they actually need it. And uh, with recent bills for paid sick leave not covering 
80% of U.S. workers. It also leaves workers who are ill more likely to continue trying to work and hence spread the virus to others. Just this week, a panel appointed by uh, New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo unveiled on Thursday its plan to reduce Medicaid spending by some 400 million because that's at all logical. Um, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and top member of Trump's Corona Task Force, recently stated that it's possible that a million people could die from coronavirus in the United States alone. Based on my experience, working in the United States is pathetic and absolutely pathetic excuse for a U.S. healthcare system. Um, what I've seen and from what my colleagues report, I can't help but think that that number is not an exaggeration whatsoever. So to cover just a couple of issues of what we're seeing in the healthcare uh, in the workplace, and I, I work at uh, a hospital in New York City and then also a federally qualified health center in New York City. So I have both kind of a little bit of experience from seeing emergency rooms overcrowded and hospital floors being overcrowded and also seeing primary health care centers and how they're functioning um, in this pandemic. So when it comes to supplies, hospitals around the country are quickly running out of supplies. This has led to practices in hospitals that would never, ever be acceptable under other circumstances. In one New York hospital, management advised staff to reuse N95 masks, which are like the special mask to help protect against airborne pathogens. Um, and they distributed a document saying, quote, N95 masks will be reused by staff until they are soiled, moist, or compromised. And to obtain a new mask, staff is supposed to go to request a mask from their supervisor. Um, when it comes to staffing, when hospitals are surging with new patients consistently like this, it's important to have an adequate number of well-trained staff. Over the years, hospital administrators have reported, have repeatedly ignored nurses' calls to increase hiring of staff to achieve safe staffing ratios, which, if instituted, would have helped to make this pandemic more tolerable. In fact, New York City nurse, nurses nearly went on strike in five hospitals in order to get safe staffing. Now, around the country, we see hospitals scrambling, putting out calls for retired nurses to return to work to help fill staffing gaps. The capitalist consistent push for profits is really just coming home to roost, and it's manifesting as uh, staffing shortages during the crisis. In terms of ventilators, there's much concern discussed about ventilators as um, many COVID patients, coronavirus patients, require intubation to help with breathing. Um, around 960,000 coronavirus patients may need to be put on ventilators at some point, but the United States currently only has about 200,000 machines, according to the Society of Critical Care Medicine, um, and this was reported by the Associated Press. U.S. industry organized to benefit a wealthy minority of capitalists has really been unable to respond to this demand and hospitals are still reporting shortages. Um, just a couple other points to close. The U.S. has had months to prepare for this pandemic. From the outset, there should have been a mass mobilization of mass production, ventilation production, personal protective equipment, production such as masks, gowns, gloves, face shields, all of those types of things. That's why now we urgently need a nationalization of the entire healthcare system under worker control. The for-profit companies that are, pro that are producing vaccines, surgical masks, ventilators, and disinfectants that are needed for providers, for physicians like myself and the nurses and other healthcare workers that I work with every day to actually battle this pandemic must be immediately nationalized to make sure there are enough resources available to treat everybody. There should also be a conversion of buildings or building of new sites for ICU beds, but capitalism itself, it's finding itself in a contradiction. We have a healthcare system based on profits, but right now we need to mobilize all of production and healthcare for the purposes of saving people's lives. And capitalism has shown itself incapable to do that. Instead of directing money to the necessary task as people are continually dying, 
the U.S. Federal Reserve injected $1.5 trillion into the fucking stock market. Donald Trump is calling himself a war president at war with this virus, but nurses and doctors like me are not only waging a war against the virus every single day, but a class war against capitalists and the capitalist government. Myself and other healthcare workers are at, every war, are at war every day with CEOs, insurance executives, managers, who just make it more difficult for us to get patients the care that they need. We need a healthcare system run democratically by doctors, nurses, employees, and patients. This would be drastically different from the current system in which a wealthy capitalists make the majority of decisions in hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, device manufacturing firms, and insurance companies. We need a system where healthcare is a human right and not a means to make money. We ultimately also need an economic system that puts the health and survival over, that puts health and survival over profit maximization. Socialism would allow for all production to be organized in a planned economy under workers' control so that resources would be better allocated and, and the creative and scientific energy people could, uh, people could be used productively to benefit all of us. Ultimately, what we are seeing unfold in the U.S. is what happens when you develop a healthcare system inside of capitalism. That's the bottom line. One that is it's a healthcare system that is predicated around extracting profit from sick bodies, one that continually attempts to drive down costs whenever possible. Dr. Fauci stated our, quote, system is not built for this, but healthcare workers dedicated to treating patients have been condemning this system for years. Our healthcare system has always been a complete disaster, but a pandemic like this just magnifies that fact. We not only need a new healthcare system, but a new economic system that values life over profit. And frankly, capitalism will never give us what we need. Thank you for letting me uh, say that.